Okay, so today what we're going to do is I'm going to take a CPX E uh, C1 PN controller uh, from Festo. It's a new new product, and I've got a CPX E 4 IOL, which is a four port IOLink master, and we're going to connect it to a couple of uh, Festo hardware here. So this is a picture here of what I'm doing. Um, so I've got the CPX CEC C1, I'm Ethernet port there. I've got the 4 IOL card here on the right, and I'm going to connect up a couple of valve terminals and a proportional uh, pressure regulator on the various ports. It's IO link again, and that's about it. The IP address of the device is 213. And that's what we're doing. So I've already shown you how to register an IODD file. We've already done that. And uh, it's going to start up a uh, CODASYS project here. The latest version. OK, we're going to do a new project. And Find a directory. Okay. We give it a name here. CPX E, hit the OK button. And I had to correct the name of the file because the, the name was actually over 256 characters for the Windows. So creating the SEER. I won't add the Ethercat master, don't need that. I'm going to select the C1 controller. That's what I'm using today. And let it create a project here. All right, so first thing I want to do is establish the connection. It scans. This is my PLC here. Um, if you're trying to figure out multiple devices on the network, you can uh, Go to scan Festo devices here. The one we're connecting to today is this one right here, the CPX ECC C1PN. Notice that the address is 213 here, 192.168.1.213. If you uh, if you look at this device address here, the if you take the D5, um, get your calculator out. The D5 in hex is 213 decimals. So that matches the last octet of the IP address. And uh, you can either double click on this to say, okay, set this as active, or you say set active path over here. So now that we've got this active in the project, this is what we're going to be communicating with, going online with. I always like to go to PLC settings, click on a couple of things here. This way the IO is always being updated in the in the in the, in the task here. And now that we have a target set up for the communication device, uh, the easiest thing to do if you have the device connected to the to our PLC here is, well, let's show you the both ways. So I'm offline. I want to add a device. And first thing we need is we need our, uh, our Propionet CCC1PN. And then our IOLink master would be next. And then you just continue to, to move down the, the channel here. Uh, I'm just going to delete this and back up a little bit. Uh, what you can do now that we've already set a path properly is that you can uh, uh, double click on CPXE and go to actual configuration and do a scan. And it shows you here. It's found this and then say apply. And it will apply that to, so it saves you a little bit of time and money. Um, okay, so now that we've got the, the physical hardware for the PLC rack or the thermal installed, then we're going to start to add our devices. So I've previously added the IODD files for uh, two different VTUG manifolds. Um, 
again, going back to the picture, the first one we're going to add here. So the VTUG has uh, a top hat. They call it a VAM-8 uh, PT. And then there's a dash 16 that I'm hooking up. Just It just changes the size of the manifold that this can be connected to. So in the PLC project here, you go to plug, plug device on the port you want to plug. And you can come through here and choose the device you want. And this one right here is the version 1.1. One, one. And then they've got this right here as well. This is the one we want to use. It's a little faster performance and you notice here it's kind of a, a faux pas on their part but there's no d dash 8 or 16 or 24 so just know that from top to bottom here it's 8 16 24 so I'm just gonna plug the device on there and I'll show you that after that we can confirm that this one over here select that one and then we want the VPPM over here next and uh, I'm doing this with the, the intention of showing you some problems. So at this point, we've got our devices, you know, double click. This shows you that it's an eight right here. Uh, double click this one. This is a 16 and then we've got our VPPM. All right. There are some parameters to set up for the VPPM, which we'll do after. And uh, so at this point, I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna dump it in the program. So log in. And like I said, I'm I'm gonna cause my myself some problems on purpose so that you guys don't have the same problem. I'm gonna download it. I'll leave this open here. And uh, F5 or you know where's the run button here online. F5 starts the program. So I'm just going to hit F5. Now we're running. And you see here we've got green everything. Everything is green, which, you know, normally you want. So, you know, I should be able to come into here. Set a couple bits. And Control F7. Force those bits. And valve should be on. Um, that's not happening. And, in fact, the... Uh, both valve terminals right now have got a red LED on them. So let's talk about this uh, this LED for a second. So the uh, the LED right here shows you, which is what I'm talking about right here, it shows you that uh, if it's solid red, that means data communication cannot be satisfactory, 24 volt load, so on and so forth. So right now we're missing um, load voltage going to the valve. So how do we how do we get that? So I didn't show you any wiring. So the wiring at the port is this right here. Um, I'll just leave this up for a second here. But it's a standard IO link wiring. And I'll get that another document here. So I went to the, the website and uh, you know I downloaded the instruction user manual for the CPXE four ILL and uh, that should give you that right there. So if I go to the website, go to the support portal, put this number in there, uh, you'll get this user manual right here. And in this user manual, I've just modified some, added my own text here. But basically, um, on the face of the module here, um, so we've got this user manual here and um, what I've done here is they, they give you some wiring instructions here for the port and I've added my own color code for the standard color code and if you uh, look at my other drawing here so this is the CPXE with the 4 IOL and there's four ports on this down here is 24 volts in and out this is the, the bottom one is the zero the red is the plus 24 volts Volts, so I've got that wired, and each one of these connectors is one channel. Um, so going back to going back to this wiring guide here, this is giving you the wiring out for this. So right now the um, P 
pin three and pin two or pin four i mean so the operating voltage supply load on. so pin five and pin three should have the load on and if you were to take a voltmeter right now it doesn't well why doesn't it well it's because we missed some configuration steps here or i did on purpose so uh, i'm just going to go offline real quick here and just like this right here has got an ip address here uh, you double click on this right here there is some setup right here so if you read the user manual uh, there are parameters that you need to configure here so the there's four ports right here and each port has got a configuration so port one uh, pl power that's load power so you need to turn that on so i'm going to turn that on and port two i have a valve and so and so forth so i'm going to hit save now download this put it in a run mode and again we're green and now the leds are uh well one eye one led is flashing and the other led is solid green so you got a flashing green and a solid green and okay so there's one other thing to consider with the vtug specifically so as i said earlier the this uh, VTUG terminal has this VAEM um, mounted on top of it, so this right here. And when you look at the VAEM modules, there is there it is right here in a different way. There's a rev number on here, so rev seven right here. And on another image I have here, there is a rev eight on this one. So this is sitting on top. This is the particular thing. So um, Festo decided to make some changes with results of the LED status, uh, and it's between Rev 7 or 8. So starting at Rev 8, the LED status means something different. And um, when you go and you download the VTUG manual here, so the installation manual here, 805-9574, you'll see that there's a variety of installation manuals here. And um, if you open these manuals up here, Let's see here. Um, here is so here's a 2015, 2000. Here's a 2015 manual, and in the in this manual here, the LED when it's when it's a normal operating status, it's green, and when it's not communicating, then it's flashing green. Um, if you go to that's that's in 2015 and in 2016 again it's normal status right here for for solid green and then you go to a newer one 2016 and i'm just going to show this here so side by side so normal is solid and over here flashing is normal so starting at rev 8 which is what this document's for. Uh, flashing is um, a flashing is a normal status. So right now, like I said, I've got a rev seven and I've got a rev eight, and they're basically saying that I don't have communication right now and uh, my my point here is that I I still didn't finish the configuration uh, on purpose just so that you guys could see what I'm doing wrong here and uh, so I've basically enabled power now but I didn't enable I/O communication so I'm going to go back offline here and for the different ports here so I've enabled power for the load uh, and I have to make it an I/O link the uh, if you go into the manuals here you'll see that DI you can use the port as a normal input module. Uh, even though DO is there, it, it says, you know, you can't use it. So if you read the manuals, DO is not an option here at all. And IO link is what we're using. So port one, port two, we're going to be configured for IO link. And then port three is the proportional regulator. Uh, I believe I don't need the valve power. I'll turn it on anyway. 
I link. So I'm going to write to the module, hit save, and now all of my LEDs are acting the way they should. Um, I'm going to show you another way to determine that your IO link is not working. So I'm just going to turn this off again. Right to the module. So when I go online, uh, one of the things that you normally do is you go to the parameters and you want to uh, read the parameters. And when you go to read the parameters, if IOLink is not active, then you get all these errors right here. Um, and that goes for any module that has nothing because it's not set up for IOLink. It doesn't know what to communicate because it's not an IOLink module. Same thing over here. IOLink mapping parameters. Go to uh, parameter do a read and I'll get errors as well. So it's going to quickly go back offline. Go back to the uh, configuration here. And I have IO link, IO link, IO link. And I'm not using port four, so I'm just going to leave those disabled. Um, otherwise, it would be causing some sort of a problem. So I'm going to write to the module. You can also do a download, it's the same thing. I'm going to Go online, yes, download, yeah, yeah. Um, and create a boot project, F5. Okay, so now everything is there. And if I go to the here, oh, let's do the same thing. So specialist read value. And now it reads it and says, hey, I have this device. If I go to this one over here, read it. Save. And if I go to this one over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I've got this set up for millibar. Right now, I'm not sending it any pressure. So I'm just going to save this real quick. Go to the IO mapping. And I don't know, two bars is 2000. Control F7 writes it. And I'm getting two bar at the output. And I'm also getting the feedback, the process input data is reflecting that. And when I go to the IOLink mapping, set a couple of bits, control F7 and turn the valves on. Those are all working. And control F7 and they're all working. So that's it. That's it. That's it. We are up and running. It was that simple. And that's how you set up an IOLink uh, for IOL on a CPXE. Thanks and have a nice day.